with great pleasure I introduce uh, Dr. Pamida Khatun, Executive Director of the Centre for Policy Dialogue, Bangladesh. Um, Ma'am, first of all, welcome to the Public Affairs Centre campus. Thank uh, you. You know, as a not-for-profit, we've seen, um, and C uh, CPD has been around for uh, quite some time right now. What do you think has been the real impact that uh, think tanks have made as far as real-world research is concerned? Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here at uh, PAC. Um, so uh, the Centre for Policy Dialogue has been working in Bangladesh for the last 25 years. So during the last 25 years, um, CPD had tried to um, raise the issues which are important for Bangladesh's development and also CPD's mission had been to give voice to the marginalized people, those uh, who cannot have access to the policy makers, but policies can really impact their lives. So CPD had been uh, playing the role of uh, uh, you know, bridging the gap between the policy makers and the people at the uh, bottom. Um, through which mechanism? Center for Policy Dialogue works um, in two legs mainly. So the first objective is to um, organize dialogues with the policy makers, with the uh, opposition members of the political parties, with the broader stakeholders. And while doing these dialogues or the conversations, we also realized that in order to have an effective conversation, you have to have evidence-based research. So research has been one of the important legs of our whole uh, you know, activities. So CPD during the last uh, two and a half decades have been working on uh, themes which are important for Bangladesh's progress and not only Bangladesh's CPD has expanded beyond national issues also it has focused on regional and global issues for example regional connectivity trade and investment and also graduation of least developed countries the issues of the least developed countries so that's how we have been working now um, you know we um, public affairs center as well as uh, you know center for policy dialogue we've been members of the think tank initiative now um, as two members uh, and you know geographically also very close to each other hmm. how do you think synergies can be built within uh, think tanks obviously our focus of research may be may be uh, you know sort of diverse even the um, as far as what uh, exact uh, issue that we are talking about right. but in that sense how do uh, how can think tanks synergize and work together yeah you see one of the major objective of think tanks is to give leadership on the issues which are important in their respective countries and also national uh, regionally and globally so think tanks may be working in different areas some think tanks may be working on scientific issues some may be working on social aspect some may be on economic some may be working on political aspect but the basic objective is the same um, so to contribute to the policy making process and to influence the policy making process of of the countries of the governments so in that from that point of view the think tanks which are uh, part of this whole network of think tank initiative they have a lot of scopes to collaborate for example with PAC and uh, between PAC and CPD we can always you know bring out issues of common interest for example climate change is an issue which is affecting all the countries in the world you know beyond borders you know, we have issues so this is an area where uh, think tanks can work and particularly um, as far as I know PAC has also interest in this and Bangladesh of course has interest because Bangladesh is the victim of this impact of climate change this is one area another area is that governance and institutional issues which is again a global issue every country suffers from regulatory frameworks weak governance weak institutions so in order to have an effective policies um, you will have to have your institutions uh, right 
Correct. You will have to have strong institutions, good governance. So these are the areas where we can collaborate. Now, uh, CPD, uh, as far as I know, has regular interactions with policymakers and the government. So, um, over the you know over the last few years, how has the, uh, yeah, how has CPD's experience been with interacting with the government? You see, the interaction with the government or working as a as an independent think tank in countries like Bangladesh or in even in South Asia, it's it's challenging mm -hmm. because you see the government uh, or political government always has their own agenda, their mandate because they have promised something to the people, and by people's vote they have come and they have something to you know um, uh, implement. But as think tanks again, the same think tanks role is to scrutinize the policies of the government. So while scrutinizing you may find that everything is not in the right way as you want to see them so then there comes the you know the tension between the government and the think tanks so our journey has not been always smooth because we, as we scrutinize the policies as we talk about more transparency accountability of government's funds or how the you know funds are being utilized for example for some projects whether what is the outcome of that project how many people have been benefited whether the objectives of the project have been fulfilled whether the you know right kind of people have been benefited so when you talk about these lot of issues come out you have to as a think tank you have to be truthful to your conviction so what when we do that, the government of the day may not like it. Um, so that, from that point of view, it's not a smooth journey. So we have a love and hate <laughs> relationship. So you see, love and hate in the sense that the government of the day does may not like, but the same political party, when it is not in the power, they would, uh, you know, they, they would find it. Yeah, they would find it so spectacular what you know what CPD is saying but if the same party goes to power they, their stance changes yeah. so that's why I said it is a love and hate relationship but it's a it's a challenge it's a struggle but we have to you know go forward since it is our mission so um, for centers like um, CPD and I think tanks like CPD and public affairs center what do you think are the potential roadblocks that you know that are there right now currently in the current scenario and how do you think we can overcome them you see in terms of roadblocks there can be two types internal and external internal I have just mentioned that because think tanks will work on policy issues policy influencing scrutinizing then you'll have not not only tensions with the government but also some other stakeholders for example with the private sector if you discuss like we work on one one of the important uh, areas which is the ready-made garments so when you do research on ready-made garments industries you talk about export promotion export in expansion of export but you also talk about the people who make those garments the workers I mean, yeah, those who are part and parcel of this whole ready-made garment sector so then while talking about that we raise issues of their pay wages we, we raise issues of, of their uh, minimum wages, their compliances, their you know um, holidays, leave, all other facilities. These are not always liked by the entrepreneur. So there is a, again tension. So these are the you know I won't say roadblocks, but I will say that these are the challenges you will have to face every in, in every steps. So and there are many types. When you, when something goes against or something challenges or challenges the particular sections of the society then you face uh, you know some tensions um, and since our mission is is to you know highlight the issues of those who are marginalized so it is always diff it is it has been difficult so these are inter uh, internal but in case of external also um, you see the work we do we need resources for that you know who will provide since since we are independent think tanks we cannot take resources from the government and then we criticize the same government or say uh, not the government the policies you can't because there's a conflict of interest you know huge conflict of interest so we'll have we have to depend on resources globally 
regionally. But the, over the years, what has been happening that resources are drying up. Um, because the whole landscape of uh, global political scenario has changed. There are more now wars in, in many uh, parts of the world. There are issues like migration, refugee crisis, all these have, and health issues crisis also. All these you know, issues have come up. As a result, resources have, are being diverted to the more in direct issues. So research or policy making um, efforts, these are now less funded. So this is one challenge that how to generate more resources and how to make the think tank sustainable. From time to time you get, get some grants, but those are one time grants. But for sustainability of think tanks, you need to have core funding. You have to have uh, some, you know, resources which will be there, just, just core funding. This is one challenging issue. And within the country also, we don't have that culture of, um, you know, the big businesses, business houses are doing a lot of philanthropy or towards philanthropy, maybe you, you know, you do charity, you open a yeah, relief and all schools, health issues, but not supporting the think tanks. We don't have that culture. As we see in the Western countries, many foundations are supporting research we don't have uh, in in our part of the world okay one final question before we wrap up um, in this scenario uh, here comes this new uh, way of um, doing uh, research the big data research mm. how has that impacted or affected the research work at cp you see the big data yes data is so important for research so what we have been doing uh, for the last couple of years we are trying to you know find out what data is available and what needs to be done. Big data, we don't have, we are talking about big data, for, for, but at least for social science research, we are yet to be there. For example, I'll give you an example that uh, when these sustainable development goals were launched, so one of the important factors to monitor the, the progress of SDGs is that you have to uh, have data. On the basis of data you can only say that how much progress we have made after five years or after ten years and then and this is important because to track your progress whether you can really reach your goals by 2030. So so that way I can say that uh, we, uh, we haven't been able to take advantage of this idea of big data. We are, we have to, I mean, particularly, I mean, we had uh, done studies, um, country studies, comparative country studies, and we have found that, you know, compared to the Western or developed countries, we are way, way behind. South Asian countries, African countries, way, way behind in terms of um, the sheer existence of the data. And next level comes the availability or access to that data. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you.